Institute. Welcome to Home or Drink Extra Juice. This is our bonus episode where we get to be a little bit looser, a little bit less restricted in what we say than our main episode. And this week's bonus episode is sponsored by Primark Pennies. And the arrival of Autumn Fashion at Pennies has us dying for the seasons to change. I'm dying to go in and see it all. I'm buzzing. Yeah. Just can't wait yeah. to be in knits and layers and scarves. I love wearing like chunky knits, but having my legs out and then having like boots, boots on. Yeah. Same. I that love chunky knits. Yeah. So buzzing for Penny's autumn range. So whether you're channeling an Ivy League aesthetic or embracing the modern preppy look, you can now shop a range of autumn essentials. And when I say essentials, I literally mean we all know Penny's has the autumn essentials mm-hmm. in the store now. Cozy up with varsity jumpers, check dresses, the perfect fit in jeans, and refresh your wardrobe with autumnal accessories and layer and pieces. They literally have something for everyone and for every outfit you'll need this autumn. Yeah. So good. Love it. Head to Penny's today to discover your autumn wardrobe staples. The rant of the week is where we get to give out about something that has happened to us, something we've seen, heard, lived, everything. <laughs> it's usually always, I feel like it's always related to airports because I'm always... It's always related to airports, cars, like driving. Or like, like people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the most annoying things in yeah. the world is them. Like four so things. Every week I always try and think of something like really specific that everybody would... Creative. Wants. Yeah, but I'm like, no, these are just the normal things that piss everybody off. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mine is... I feel like it pisses everyone. It doesn't even piss me off. I just don't get it. Like, people who get up and queue for the plane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my number one pet peeve. I catch myself doing it sometimes. No. Sometimes I do. Like, I'd never be first in the queue or whatever. I don't understand those people. Like, I'll be last. I'll just sit there. Why would I stand on my good two legs when I can sit on my good two legs? Yeah. Yeah. Can't S- understand it. I think I always get a fear then of being like, shit, if I'm not standing there, they'll forget about me. Or like, fuck, what if I'm standing at the wrong gate? Really? Yeah. So I was like, I always have to triple million percent check the little board to be board. like, is this <gasps> the right flight that I'm getting on? Yeah. Am I going to get left behind? Yeah. But I never understand people like who actually fully wait. Like as soon as they walk to the gate, they just get in the queue and stand there. Or the plane's not even there yet. Your seat is there. You bought it. You bought your priority head. You bought your priority bag, but overhead. It's there. It's actually, there. when I went to Nashville, they, I think you get, everyone gets a cabin case. It's not like you have to pay for it on board. But because I was lat, because I didn't queue up, I didn't, there was no space for my case. That's also one thing, yeah. That I understand then. But your like, case might not end up above your head. It might end up further down. And then when you're getting off, if you have to walk back through the crowd of people to get your case that's behind that you. That is true inconvenience. That's the only thing. That, that is, get. yeah. Like, especially in them American flights, they always, they don't have mm. space for anyone. Like No. But yeah, I just don't get it. Just sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Do, pink. Sit, get get down. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I so much have a, a rant. Okay. I was ranting yesterday about a taxi driver who pulled out in front of me and didn't use indicators. Oh. Taxi drivers, do you not have to go through all these mad tests to be a taxi yeah, driver? I don't think so. You think you'd have the right idea to be using your indicators. What do you think? You on the road? No. So, honestly. He threw a tissue out the window at me because he pulled out in front of me and I beat Ew. him. Ew. Yeah, he threw a tissue out the window at me. That's disgusting. <laughs> he literally do spit in it to throw it at you. Like there was three lanes that we were coming into. It was coming up the hill at, um, in town. I don't know the name of it. Coming up that like hill around kind of from like Mead Street. I don't know. But it goes into three lanes. But the left lane is to turn left, but it's always full of buses. So you always end up in like the two. And I fucking knew he was going to do it when I was coming up. We were side by side and I knew he was going to do it. And I was in the lane I needed to turn in. And he just absolutely flew out in front of me. And I was like, you're fucking doing it. So I beeped him. So he rolled down his window and threw his tissue out at That's me. That's vile. <laughs> That's absolutely vile. And then he was, I was going straight and he was turning right. And of course him turning right. Oh, no indicator again. I was like. That's mm-hmm. dangerous though. Like, yeah. Like, and they always have like dash cams and I'm like, well, you're going to crash into someone because of you, not because yeah. of someone else. I was like, oh, piss off. That's disgusting. A tissue. What am I going to do with that? Just in, like, just be considerate on the road. Just use an indicator. Please. And don't pull out in front of people. People give me anxiety. Drive. Like, bad stuff happens. Yeah. I, I do feel myself, I drive kind of bulky in town though. Well, like uh, because like, sure. I feel like everybody else, <laughs> I feel like everybody else's drives like that. I like, like everyone's very like frantic. Yeah, but like Balchi is like uh, get out of my way. Like like, one, like yeah, really? one, yeah. One, so I find it. All, it was only in te- everywhere else. I'm like da 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 da. I used to play Grand Theft Auto and I used to like stop at the red lights. No, no. So, 
Yeah, I used to like drive really fast and furious. Yeah, sixty miles now. Yeah, on my little PSP, I used to drive like so normally and all down the road. What the fuck was I doing? But in town, I find myself being like, nah, fuck is all, get out of my way. Yeah, we're all everyone in. Else is yeah, like everyone that. else is like that. So it makes me be like that then. Yeah. So like, yeah, you're everyone's just on edge. Just on, everyone's just fighting for their place on the road. Yeah, really. it's like we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Yeah, just relax. We're fine. Everyone needs to take one deep breath. Yeah. Did you ever play that game on on PlayStation? Ed Simpsons hit and run. Probably, that was the yeah. best game ever. You could just get out of your car and get in someone else's car. Love that. And like, you'd be going around, what's it called, Springfields. Yeah. But like, the aim was to like... Destroy the place. Destroy cars. Yeah. I feel like that wouldn't be acceptable. Did you ever do a Crash Bandicoot? Love. Oh, I love. I love that. We I could love. only play it in Limerick on my cousin's PS1. Oh. Because we didn't have one at home. So we'd have to wait to go down there and be dying to play a Crash Bandicoot. Oh my God. I love that. Like, is there games that we can get now at our age? I would love to get a game, like a Nintendo. Nintendo Animal Switches? Cro- Animal Crossing. Oh, my little dog is definitely dead from my Nintendo DS. Mine's dead as a dog, though. Dead as a dog. He was a sausage dog. Oh, they mm. were so good. And you bring them on, make them do like, what's it called? Obstacle course. Yeah. Remember? Ah, poor fucker. He hasn't been fed in about no, 10 years. No. <laughs> Probably more. more. I remember when I used to play like the DS in my bed and I'd be like, my, I heard my mom coming in. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you just close off. And the DS was like yeah. lighting up underneath. Yeah, the making the little noise. Or okay. whatever little noise it makes. Or Mario I loved. I love Half-Life as I think it's shoe people in that. Oh. That was good. Can't imagine you playing a shooting game. I love that one. And the same, do you play The Sims? Mm. I was The Sims. I wasn't oh. really. Loved Sims. No. Loved. They used to piss me off the way they talked and walked and all. Oh, I loved it. You could like, like get a clown to come to your house and all. And like if you, you could set the house, I think I used to set my house on fire. I think I used to make them, the girls all kiss each other and all and like, I don't know, I think I got a bit <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did. Got a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to try and make like everyone just shag and all. And oh, like, yeah. They don't think you procreate. I don't think you could make them have babies. Could you not? But you could make them kiss. I used to make their houses go on fire and all. Yeah. I used yeah. to that too and kill everyone. What the fuck? <laughs> so bad. Or the same as on the DS. It was like this, I don't, hope someone remembers this game. I've seen it on TikTok, but like it was like an alien invasion. Oh. And you'd have to get out of the alien and you'd tip the cow and the cow would like either give you money or chase after you or something like that. It was mad. But I thought I made it up until I saw it on TikTok again. I was like, oh my God, it was a real game. I love those TikTok pages that are like the 90s kids. Yeah. And they just show you all the like the toys, toys or sweets or like, oh. yeah. I loved my toy of the Polly Pocket Mermaid Cave. Didn't have that. So good. They'd like change colour tails and all. So good. What the hell? So good. Miss being a children. No, same. If I could go back for one day, I'd run them up. Oh, 100%. Sorry, also for rants, you can send them into our email address. It's homewardrinkatgoloudnow.com. If you have a rant that's very specific that we've missed or we haven't said yet, then definitely send it in. If I was you as where, we get to give you a very honest and raw advice about what we do. We can't sit on the fence and give you maybes or ifs. We just have to tell you exactly how we feel about the dilemma. So these are sent into our email address too. So it's homewardrinkatgoloudnow.com and it's all anonymous as well. Hi girls, I recently broke up with my partner and it was a mutual decision because we are two different and have different interests. I'm holding on for hope here, as the saying goes, opposites attract, but on the other hand, is going our separate ways best for both of us. My partner enjoys drinking, going out, holidays to party destinations, whereas I'm the exact opposite. I like fitness, simple pleasures. This has always been an argument for us and it may come down to me ultimately not trusting my partner due to who they were in a past life. I know the past is the past, but this is something I struggle to accept. I myself have a certain scar because of party holidays and the perception around them, i.e. hooking up, substance use, etc., which is a red flag for me. Everyone has told me we're not right for each other, but it can be so hard when you're the people in it and know how we made each other feel when we were good. We were so, so good. Should we leave things as they are and get the closure or fight through this and make it work through the likes of counselling, etc.? Is trust something that can be gained all of a sudden in a relationship I get a red flag when I ever hear someone saying when we were good we were good because then I know the bads were bad yeah 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 it's one or the other yeah I feel like in when you think of then a healthy relationship there's not these big huge extremes yeah yeah of like do you know what I mean yeah there is going to be little waves but they're only small little waves yeah whereas it's not a tsunami of feeling one high and then feeling one low and yeah a big jump up yeah. and down that's unhealthy to be yeah. like that. And I think someone saying when we were good, we were so good, maybe are you trying to convince yourself 
of that and focus on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I used to do it myself. Like, you'd find yourself being like... Romanticised. No, but like, it? yeah, you romanticise the good parts. No, but we do get along and all. Yeah, but then it's like, then what? The other half of something is not good. And sometimes the good is only seems so good because the bad is so bad. Yes. So when I think of my good, like, good parts, past they weren't even that good. They like, weren't even that great. They just good because we weren't fucking killing each Yeah, we weren't fighting. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only... It was because the the there was no argument for one minute. Yeah, the day. and it was so good. I think you seem... Like, different people do attract, but I think you seem quite different. Mm. If he really, really enjoys partying, you, like, don't agree with that at all. You don't drink. You like your fitness. I just feel like all signs point to not leaving it. Yeah, yeah, where it is. Like, think of how different a relationship could be if you had somebody in your life who does have the same interests as you. Like, I know every relationship is different and you don't always... You're not both the same person. Yeah, yeah. the same person because Jesus, I think that would be hell. Mm-hmm. But if you had somebody who was interested in a little bit of what you like or maybe not just so interested in the complete opposite of what Yeah, you like. it's very chalk and cheese. Mm. And it is hard when you do love that person that you've been together, but I just feel like there's a reason that you broke up. Mm. It was mutual. The two of you wanted it. Like if something changed in the future, like it might come back. But I think... You just broke up for a reason. I think try to remember that reason instead of thinking of all the good. Yeah. Your brain can just make things up in your own head, really. Your brain goes to the good to like protect yourself. Yeah. And she's saying, I think when it relationship has no trust, it's very hard to make it work. No. And it's definitely something that can't be gained all of a sudden. I think if you are going to try again, trust is something that will come eventually. Eventually. Like, but like, is it worth it till then? Yeah. You, do you have already, to wait until that and work for it? Like, yeah. Do you not rather be in something that you can just trust somebody? Like, you don't have to work for it yeah but then all on the other hand I'm like relationships are work but if he's already broken up over it it's a mutual decision maybe you need to like the two years do work alone mm. instead of together for, for the moment and yeah then, and see if you still feel really strongly towards them you can see it maybe going back together yeah in the future mm. so you can send your dilemma or first world problem or rant into homodrinkatgolanow.com new episodes of Home I Drink episodes Epi- episodes <laughs> of Home I Drink extras come out every Monday and our main episodes are on Wednesday Thank you so much to Penny's for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget to check out the collection of autumn essentials available in your nearest Penny's or Primark store right now. Make sure to like, rate and subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you are listening to right now. Give us a big thumbs up. And I think that's me. Or that's me. That's it from me and Bird. That's us. That's us, Birds. That's us. And we'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Bye. Subscribe to this podcast for free on the Go Loud app.